Hey Spike, how did you draw a pentagram? Oh god, are you wrapping my gift? You gotta warn me about these things. What? No, no, this is for our neighbor Nick. He got us that bottle of wine last year. I don't remember that happening. Where was I? You drank the entire thing. I'm a stuffed animal. Oh, right. Well, hey, I almost had your gift ready too. Please don't tell me what it is this time. Yep, I'm making a challenge video for you where I'm beating the TCG2 using only Ice-type Pokemon. Why would that ever be something I would want? You always said we need more Dugong in this house. Dugong? No, Gugon. I said we need more Gugon in this house. We're out of Gugon? All right, I'll add that to the shopping list. Wait, I got a text from, it's from our neighbor Nick. It says, check the front door. Maybe it's another bottle of wine. It says, open me. Perspector, why is Nick staring into our window? This is getting weird. Well, are you gonna open it? No, no, I'm, I gotta go work on your video. <sighs> Please don't. He's gonna love this. Hello my friends, tis the season for another wacky Pokemon TCG challenge. The tree is up, the lights are hung, the fire is a-blazing, and as for me, I'm just living, yo. But you know what I noticed? I haven't done a challenge on the sequel to the Pokemon trading card game in over a year now. Yeah, I've only done two in fact, Parasect only and Sandslash only. I think it's time we delve into that ever so interesting Japanese only sequel once more, with the English translation of course. Last December, I did a challenge on TCG1 where I only used one each of the five available ice types. Cloyster, Dugong, Jinx, Lapras, and Articuno. It was actually a lot of fun, although maybe a bit too easy at times. So I thought it would only make sense to do this same challenge on the sequel. So hang those stockings, get that mug of eggnog back into the microwave, and make sure you never put any rock salt down on the sidewalk because we are gonna head back to sub-zero temperatures, baby. I don't even care if your mail carrier falls from slipping. Welcome to a very Perispector Holiday Special, Volume 2, Ice Types Only. So the thing with TCG2 is that there are a lot more cards to deal with. Base set, jungle, and fossil expansions return, but now we also have the Team Rocket expansion and a lot of the Japanese vending cards. It was that transition period between Gen 1 and Gen 2, so the game is still 99% Gen 1 based. But apparently there are Togepi, Meryl, and Lugia cards in this, which I didn't know. But just like last time, the rules are very simple. I can only attack with Pokemon that are originally Ice types. Ice is not a type in the card game, so my deck will be made up of specific Water and Psychic types. But yes, I can only deal damage with Cloyster, Dugong, Jinx, Lapras, and Articuno. Shelter and Seal are necessary to be in the deck in order to use Cloyster and Dugong, but I cannot deal damage with them, as they are pure water types. And also, if you are familiar with this game, many of the matches require certain cards to be in the deck. So for instance, when I must add 4 Pikachu to the deck against one trainer, they obviously have to be there, but I cannot use any of their moves. And this is going to be a personal rule, but just like last time, I am only allowing myself to use one of each Pokemon. I will be making an exception to this rule only a couple times, which I'll get into when I approach that. So alright, I have 11 different cards to go over here, so if you don't want to hear about them, skip to this time to get to the challenge, because this may take a minute. So our first icy friend is going to be Dugong. Also, all of these are going to be water types, except for Jinx. Firstly, there are two seal options, but since they don't matter for this challenge, I will be sticking to using the base set one just because it has 60 HP instead of 50 from the vending variant. But, base Dugong is our returning champion from last time. It has 80 HP, a weakness to lightning, and a heavy 3 retreat cost. For 2 water and a colorless, Aurora Beam simply does 50. For 2 water and 2 colorless, Ice Beam does 30, but can cause paralysis with a heads flip. Base Dugong is great, and proved to be formidable a lot in the last challenge. Vending Dugong has 60 HP, a weakness to lightning, and a 2 retreat cost. 
For two colorless, rest heals all damage counters on Dugong, as well as poison, confusion, or paralysis, and then Dugong goes to sleep. For three water, Aurora Wave does 30 and confuses on a heads flip. Overall, I think base Dugong will be the one I'll use more, as it's just better all around, except for the higher retreat cost. Rest could be useful, but it only has 60 HP max anyway. Our next freezy friend is Cloyster, and there is only one option. Weirdly, there are two Shelter options, but I'll eventually be using the Vending one as it has 50 HP rather than 30. But Fossil Cloyster has 50 HP, a weakness to Lightning, and a 2 Retreat cost. For 2 Water, I can use either Clamp or Spike Cannon, exactly the same cost. Clamp deals 30 and paralyzes with a Heads Flip. However, a Tails Flip negates the 30 and the turn ends. Spike Cannon does 30 for each Heads on 2 Flips. So Cloyster is a very risky card without a lot of HP, it probably won't be much of a powerhouse, but has the potential to deal 60 damage with only 2 energies. I'll probably opt for Spike Cannon over Clamp just about every time. Next we have 3 Jinx options and all are Psychic types. Base Jinx has 70 HP, a weakness to Psychic, and a 2 retreat cost. For 1 Psychic, Double Slap does 10 damage for each heads on 2 flips. For 2 Psychic and a Colorless, Meditate does 20 plus 10 more for each damage counter on the defending Pokemon. Meditate is pretty great and quickly turns into a knockout move. Vending Jinx is an interesting one. It has 50 HP, a weakness to Psychic, and a 1 Retreat cost. But this one doesn't even use Psychic energies. For 1 Water, Ice Punch does 10 and paralyzes with a Heads Flip. For 2 Water, Cold Breath does 20 and causes Sleep with a Heads Flip. It's not a powerhouse card, but if I wanted to stick to only using water energies in the deck, this is the one to go with. There is a water energy only trainer in this game too. But now we have the single most important card in the entire deck, as it's the only card that can keep this challenge stain possible. This is also the only card I'll be making an exception to the one card per Pokemon rule. Let me explain. This is what is known as Bulbasaur Deck Jinx, which was from a Japanese only starter half deck. It has 70 HP, a weakness to Psychic, and a 2 Retreat cost. For 1 Colorless, Pound does 10. That's it. For 1 Psychic and 1 Colorless, Double Slap does 20 damage for each heads on 2 flips. Now, you're probably saying, Paraspector, this card is the absolute worst. How is this the most important card in the deck? Well, you foolish and naive person, let me explain. It's because Pound is the only damage dealing attack out of any of my Pokemon options that uses only colorless energy. This matters because of those awful trainers that demand that I only use one type of energy in the deck. So when I'm dealing with 20 lightning energies in the deck or whatever, Pound is the only move I'll be able to use. And yes, that absolutely sucks. It does 10 damage and nothing else. Therefore, when I reach those trainers, I'll be ditching the four other ice types in favor of using four of these Jinx. It is sure going to suck. At least Jungle Parasect could deal 30 with Slash when I did that challenge. And this is Paraspector in the future here, but I applied the 4 Jinx rule with Base and Bulbasaur Deck Jinx too when I approached the Psychic Energy only trainer. Then we have two Lapras options. Fossil Lapras is an underrated gem. It has 80 HP, a weakness to Lightning, and a 2 Retreat cost. For 1 Water, Water Gun does 10 damage, and 10 more for each additional Water Energy on it, up to 2 more. For 2 Water, Confuse Ray does 10 and confuses on a Heads Flip. A classic tanky card for sure. Vending Lapras has 60 HP, a weakness to Lightning, and a 1 Retreat cost. For 1 Colorless, Sing puts the defending Pokemon to sleep with a Heads Flip. For 2 Water, Surf just does 30. This one is fine. I think Fossil Lapras is the better of the two, but 30 damage with only 2 energies on this one is better than with the Fossil one. I may switch these around at times. And finally, we have the legendary bird itself, Articuno. And there are three options, kinda. One of them is the ultimate legendary card that everybody wants that I will be getting from Jack right near the end of the game, so it will only come into play for a few battles. Weirdly enough, one of the trainers requires that I use all legendary cards, so I'll have to pick this one for that match. Legendary Articuno has 100 HP, no weakness, a resistance to fighting, and a 2 retreat cost. It has the Pokemon power of Quick Freeze, which, when I bring it into play, it paralyzes the opponent's Pokemon with a Heads Flip. A nice little bonus. Its only attack is Ice Breath for 3 water that does 40 damage to any one of my opponent's Pokemon at random. Pretty awesome, but tough to strategize with. Fossil Articuno is what I used last time, and it has 70 HP, no weakness, a resistance to fighting, and a 2 retreat cost. For 3 water, Freeze Dry does 30 and paralyzes with a Heads Flip. 
For 4 water, Blizzard does 50, and with a heads flip, every one of my opponent's bench Pokemon takes 10 damage. With Tails, all of my bench takes 10. It's kind of like self-destruct without the knockout. And the very last one I'll be talking about, thanks for hanging in there if you watched all of these, is Promo Articuno. It has 80 HP and the same no weakness, fighting resistance, and 2 retreat cost as the others. This one has the Pokemon power of Aurora Veil, where if Articuno is my active Pokemon, none of my benched ones can take any damage, unless Articuno has a status condition. Just a nice little bonus that honestly probably won't come into play too often. And its only attack is Ice Beam for 2 water and 2 colorless, which does 30 and paralyzes with a heads flip. I think this is the worst of the three, as it needs 4 energies to do any damage, and it basically has the same attack as Fossil Articuno, who only needs 3 energies. So I probably won't end up using this one too often. Oh boy, that was a lot to go over. I think it's time to begin this long, long challenge, as this is a beast of a game compared to the first one. And because of this, I think I'll go through the first half of the game just a little faster than the second half. The GR Island is where all of the gimmicks come into play, and getting there is the first main objective. Okay, let's begin this. And hey, happy holidays everybody, from the bottom of my possessed bug heart. So the game begins with some dastardly fellas straight up stealing cards from every club leader and myself in a stupid looking blimp. This is Great Rocket, or GR, and they like to wear Halloween masks from Party City to try and look tough. So then I go whine to Dr. Mason, have Derpy Ronald let me know that he's my rival even though I just trounced his deck like yesterday, and then I'm given the most atrocious looking starter deck I've ever seen. Fire and fighting? Are you kidding me Dr. Mason? Did you even read the title of this video? Apparently you are not a doctor of common sense, that's for sure. So now it's time to do all of the work myself and go collect one of each of my icy friends. But there's one problem, and I could be wrong about this, but I can only obtain 4 of the 11 cards right now. The rest are in packs for the second half of the game, with all 3 Articuno cards being among them. Well, that sucks. So the Lord of Freeze is going to have to wait. For now, this is what I can make of a deck. Fossil Cloyster, Base Dugong, Bulbasaur Deck Jinx, who I will refer to as B-Deck Jinx, and Vending Lapras. And like always, I'm going in with limited trainer options and water and psychic energies that I'll obtain over time. Let's make this a challenge, and I will certainly not regret this decision in any way. First up, Stony Jean. And let me tell you, I had an atrocious start. After 7 losses in a row, no I'm not joking, I decided that I need to get better trainer and energy cards, although this wasn't even the problem most of the time. 5 out of those 7 losses were because I only had Seal or Shelter out, who I can't attack with. I did this to myself, I guess. So I go and make my deck uh, slightly better. Attempt numbers 8 through 15 went horribly and I am having so much fun. On my 16th attempt, I get Dugong in for the first time and I still lose. This is absolutely stupid. This challenge was a little too easy in the first game, and now it's like I'm walking around blindfolded on the edge of a volcano. But oh my god, I actually won on the 17th attempt. It was so incredibly satisfying, Aurora beaming and ice beaming his entire team to death. His rock types froze and split into so many pieces on this day. I'm only able to describe it in seconds here, but just imagine doing this 17 times in a row. I hate this challenge so far. But I love Dugong. It's crazy to me that it's only an uncommon card too. So Kabuto coin and an entire deck obtained. Let's leave this dreadful, dreadful place. GR1 is next, and this took me 5 attempts, and yet again I only won because of Dugong. Is this going to become a thing? But then I realized I could have saved state before opening the rocket pack because this is where I can get one of the Articuno variants finally. But I didn't and I didn't get one and I can't fight GR1 again. Yeah, this is off to a rollicking good start. I'll remember to do this against the next GR member. But check this out! I finally have some good news. One of the super nice grassy ladies at the grass club just straight up gives out an Omanite pack. Why does this matter? Because I thought those were only in the second half of the game. I actually can get an Articuno here. I feel like I just went Super Saiyan 6. Now the real challenge can begin. Omanite packs are also how I can get base Jinx, but I only get one pack right now and Articuno takes full priority. So then I find out where Nikki is hiding who just gives me another GR deck and the Oddish coin. No battling necessary. Yeah, things are starting to look up. 
And looking up they are. I absolutely stomped GR2 here, mostly thanks to Vending Lapras. Articuno came in to finish the job, and even though I'm getting a rocket pack here, I'm really not concerned about getting Vending Articuno now that I have the fossil one. So I let it go and take what I get. Half of the GR coin is complete. Let's continue on. So I think it's time we... No, no, Ronald, no. You don't get to take up video time here. Go away. But I did win in case you were wondering. But now it's time to go save some ladies from homicidal drowning. What a game this is. Psychopath GR3 has them locked in a cage underwater, so I really gotta act fast. So let's politely sit down together, shuffle our decks accordingly, and play a nice relaxing card game. And his pincer absolutely stomps me, easily taking down Articuno and then Lapras. Attempt number two. And this went much better. Jinx held her own until I was able to power up Articuno. Man, it's a whole different story having Articuno around. And I'm getting lucky enough even finding it too. I mean, it's only one out of 60 cards. So GR3 frees the water club folk from their lungs filling with chlorine, and I get rewarded with a Starmie coin and a lot more cards. Ladies, please. This challenge is getting to be too easy now. But then they tell me that GR3 has gone to go burn the fire club members to death, mimicking a scene from Saw 2. So, I guess I'll battle them in a card game again. This game is just hilarious to me sometimes. And this was incredibly easy. I started with a seal and got dugong within a few turns and just one-shotted their whole team with aurora beam. It's crazy how well this is going now compared to that rock club. My head hurts just thinking about that again. So I get the Charmander coin and now I have three-fourths of the GR coin complete. We are almost ready to head to GR Island. Now I gotta take out two Lightning Club members before fighting GR4 and Nicholas was a total cakewalk. Isaac, however, I have some concerns about this due to three-fifths of my mons having a lightning weakness. And attempt number one starts out okay, but he gets some stupid good coin flip luck, and his Fero slash Dark Electrode combination are too much for Jinx and Articuno. Attempt number two. I start with Articuno, who simply takes out six of his Pokemon in a row. That's it. That was the whole battle. Well, now this is looking more like the challenge from the original game. Psychic Club is next, and then we'll wrap up this beginning part. So Murray is under some lame mind control thing, blah blah, he was really easy. I did almost win with just Lapras, but Lapras took a very long trip to the farm, and Articuno went in to finish the job. Man, Articuno is really good, but getting it in the game hasn't always meant a sure win. Alakazam coin obtained, so all that's left to do now is knock out GR4, get the final piece of the coin, and then it's GR Island time. And I'll go into more detail on more interesting card matches from here on. The GR4 fight was actually pretty decent, but yes, I did end up winning because of Articuno, but it wasn't easy. Dark Hypno and Kingler were a bit of a nuisance, but alas, I prevailed. All coins obtained, and hey, look at this, I even managed to get Vending Articuno in the rocket pack on the first try. I don't think I'll end up using it, but I actually do want to get all of the ice cards as options. And hey, Derpy Ronald gives me a free Omanite pack, so now I can officially upgrade to base Jinx. Maybe he isn't so bad after all. I'll soon have access to Pidgeot packs where I can find Vending Dugong, Vending Jinx, and Fossil Lapras. I'm also still missing, of course, the ultimate legendary Articuno that I'll get from Jack at the end of the game. But for now, let's commence the GR Island. Now the real game begins. So we take the long as heck blimp ride, looking at all of the amazing sights along the way, and then I'm forced to fight GRX who reveals himself to be Ronald in a surprise to nobody. Uh, it actually was a surprise to me at first, but now I knew. Grass for time. So yeah, this little girl in a sunbonnet has Nerd Leader Rick trapped, so he gets freed once I defeat her and... Oh wow, look at that! A hungry Snorlax card! Thank you so much for this gift, Rick. I'll make sure I turn it into coal for when I fill your stocking. This is an ice-only challenge, you moron. Get this Snorlax out of my face. But you know what? This does mean that there's some good news now. I can go demolish Rick and gank some of those precious Pidgeot packs to get three out of the last four cards now. But, eh, I think I'll wait a little bit. I'm in no hurry to get any of those right now. Maybe Fossil Lapras would be good to use, but I kind of like this one with Surfer only two energies. Let's continue on for now. Next is this farmer lad named James, who is really GR1, the mad lad that took me five attempts the first time. But this time was very different. All I ended up needing the entire match was base Jinx. She ran the table on him, although it was a close call at first. And here is where my first energy requirement comes into play. Oh joy. 
Liz demands that I only use grass energies, so you know what that means. It's time to use only four vending jinx for this by only using pound. I have been dreading this since the beginning. Let's see how many attempts this takes. Let's do this. So since I would barely need any grass energies, as it only takes one to attack per jinx, I loaded up with 45 trainer cards, 11 grass energies, and four jinx. So it starts with my one jinx against Charmander and three others. Oh boy. So I go and remove an energy and... What's this? Her bench is a Grimer and two Ekans? Why all of those are weak to Psychic? Maybe I have a chance yet. So Charmander and Jinx begin to exchange Scratch for Pound, not much happening here. She pretty quickly evolves one of the Ekans into Dark Arbok, and yeah, this is bad. It has Stare, which just does 10 to 1 to mine and stops Pokemon Powers, which doesn't matter to this deck. And its other move is Poison Vapor, which does 10, poisons me, and does 10 to everyone on my bench. Yeah. So I whip up a Swifty Gusty to bring in unsuspecting Ekans in to stall for time. I use a couple potions and then decide I gotta do something fast. I use another Gusty to bring Dark Arbok in, as it is weak to Psychic. Three pounds and it's gone. I use a Defender to try and stave off an attack, and it does work. She doesn't add a third energy to use Poison Vapor. She then retreats Dark Arbok for a Grimer and poisons me immediately. Come on. My next card, Full Heal. Awesome. I just get poisoned on the next turn, but my next card is my burly friend, Professor Samuel J. Oak. And crazy enough, this was all I needed. I really didn't have a problem getting the rest of the prizes, and I actually won without losing a single Jinx. But also, this has to be the easiest of the solo energy battles. The others may be a bit more rough. But I did this on the first attempt by only using Pound. Awesome. Grass Fort Leader Parker is next, who has the rule that no grass Pokemon can have a status condition. I don't have too many who can even do that, just Articuno and Dugong's Ice Beam, so that's not a big deal for me. But this one goes pretty rough. He gets a fully powered Kangaskhan real fast and just Comet Punches my whole team. I... I couldn't stop it. Its punches were so fast. Attempt number two. In this battle, oh man, strap yourselves in folks because this was epic. I took out all six of his using only Articuno and never taking any damage. Uh oh. I even paralyzed his Kangaskhan with Ice Beam just because it's not a grass type. Your own rule backfired on you, bro. So, alright then, Golbat coin obtained, let's continue on. Lightning Ford is next, and we start off with Cassie demanding 4 Pikachu. This actually took me 2 attempts, as on the first one I started with just Pikachu, Seal, and Shelter, none of which I can attack with. I did get Lapras, but it was taken out easily. The second attempt was again just Articuno doing everything. And oh, here we go. Just like that, it's time for Chip and his stupid lightning energy only rule. Time to bust out the poundin' jinx. And yeah, this sucks. The first attempt took 13 minutes, and I was actually super close to winning, but I ended up losing 4 jinx. He was getting Electrode and Jolteon and Magneton all day, and I'm only dealing 10 a turn. Attempt number 2. And this one, not a whole lot to say here. I actually ended up winning with only losing 1 jinx. It helps using combinations of Gusties and Plus Powers by taking out his weaker ones, although he took out his own Magnemite with a self-destruct, so that's on you, man. So Thunder Steve gets rescued and gives me some awful card that I hate yada yada, and wait a second, how have I never noticed this before? Chip gives Steve some packs to redistribute, and Steve says, Oh, thanks a lot, sir. You're a good man. You're a good man? Might I remind you, Thunder Steve, that Chip here is really GR3. Yes, the GR3 who put multiple men and women through water and fire torture. But no, he's a good man. God, I can't with this game. Let's move on to the leader of the Lightning Fort. Catherine wants- No, wait, you're a good man? Like how John Kramer was a good man in the Saw movies? Okay, alright. Catherine has the rule where all lightning attacks do 10 more damage. This could be a problem as three-fifths of my usable Pokemon are weak to lightning. Also, I decide to switch up the Jinx here and use the vending one that uses only water energies. Time to ditch those silly psychic ones, even though she is a psychic type card. I start with just Articuno and a handful of water energies, plus a Pokeball against her Doduo. I succeed on the Pokeball and opt for Jinx, the only other Pokemon not weak to lightning. Catherine immediately gets Dark Jolteon and removes my first energy to power up Articuno. Come on. I already need three turns to even attack. So Doduo starts doing lame fury attacks and gets a couple shots in while I do my best to get Articuno ready. 
I'm finally able to use Freeze Dry, fully seeing the humor in a level 35 Articuno, not one-shotting a level 10 Doduo with an ice attack. She then gets Dark Raichu, so I feel like I'm in trouble. Doduo then goes 2 for 2, and I'm down to 30 just like that. I'm now all in on Articuno with 4 energies and nothing for my Bench Jinx and Seal. I do have two Gusties, so I use one to bring in Dark Raichu because I am not scared of Doduo. I go for the Blizzard and get Tails, so my friends take some damage. I draw a potion and heal up and take a huge chance here. Instead of knocking out Dark Raichu, I opt for my last Gusty to one-shot Dark Jolteon. Boom! Tails again on Blizzard. Ugh. She brings in Doduo, I draw a Shelter and finally get heads with Blizzard. Doduo is dead and she is hurting. In comes another Doduo going 2 for 2 again, down to 20. Now here's where it gets nuts. I try Blizzard, of course, because if I get heads, I win. It's Tails, so she only has Dark Raichu left with 10 HP. My prize is the Oak Man. But dear god, Dark Raichu then uses Surprise Thunder, which not only knocks out Articuno, but it does a random amount of 0, 10, or 20 to all of my bench Pokemon at random. Articuno, dead. Jinx, dead. Seal, almost dead, but I can't attack with it. Shelter, dead. She got three prizes all in one turn, and I'm left with a seal on Death's Door who I can't even do anything with. Which is funny, because I would win here if I didn't make that a rule, but I go for Professor Sammy who gives me a Lapras. Lapras needs two energies to attack, so I think I can win here if she doesn't play a Pokemon. She plays a Bill, so that's scary, but she doesn't play anything. Seal gets the surprise thunder of its life, taking 80 damage. Lapras only takes 10. But it's all over. I just surf once, knocking out her zappy friends. That was crazy close. Magnemite coin obtained, and now I'm given the option of the fire or water fort. Let's go fire, because I need a break after that. First is Jess with no deck requirements. Super easy. Now here we go again. Kara says only fire energies are allowed. And you know what the most annoying part of this is? Adjusting the deck. So I go through and take out all of my ice buddies, put four Jinx in, add a whole bunch of trainers, and yeah, this was actually really easy. I got a couple prizes from taking out Machop, who are weak to Jinx, and she only used a Charmander and Doduo for the others. No real threat there. Time to change everything back. Ellen wants 4 Eevee in the deck, and once again, it was no problem at all. Articuno finished the job. Time for Fire Leader Bernard. Bernard took a glance at my Icy Mons, and he was like, Gosh, I'm super scared of those. I better make sure none of my fire types have a weakness to them so I even stand a chance. But Bernard, what you fail to realize is, Articuno is the legendary bird of the element of ice. Your silly, pathetic Magmar and Ponyta army are nothing. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, you get rid of that weakness to water, see if I care. Articuno single-handedly dealt with his whole team. Yet, I still wouldn't say Articuno is great. Really good for sure, but it was my only Pokemon, and it takes three turns to even be able to attack. I was lucky enough to get water energies early on, or else I would have had some problems. But Magmar coin easily obtained, and it's on to the water fort to be with my blue brethren. So after some boring battle with Ronald, I find my good friend Jacob. Jacob has no idea what's going on, so get this. He makes a rule where I can only use water energies. <laughs> what's next? YouTube is going to tell me I can only make Pokemon videos? Oh. So oddly enough, I lose very quickly as I only drew a shelter. Attempt number two. I only get seal and shelter. Come on. This is supposed to be the only solo energy battle that I can excel at. This is embarrassing. Attempt number three. This one finally goes my way, although it wasn't super easy. Vending Jinx was the star this time, although I had to retreat when he brought out an Eevee. Vending Jinx uses water attacks, but is still a psychic type, so I couldn't hit Eevee. Cody is next, and he says... Hey, Paraspector, how about we both put four weak fish in our deck? So I did, and Magikarp was the only Pokemon I drew. Attempt number two. I use a turn one Pokeball to get Articuno. Done. So then this little kid tells Jack that he's free to go from being held captive behind a waterfall. I'm sorry, I just don't get this game. So they kidnap the Grand Master of Ice, place him behind a waterfall, put a small child in charge of guarding it while he stands around with a deck of cards waiting for someone to come around and defeat him? Why should that be the reason they let Jack go? Why kidnap him at all? I mean, what if nobody shows up because you need to collect all of the coins to even get to GR Island? Would they let Jack starve to death just because he likes to use ice Pokemon in his little card deck? I don't understand this game. It's just so stupid. Well, moving on. 
Alex says there can only be three Pokemon on a bench, which does not intimidate me in the slightest. I only have five Pokemon in the whole deck, my guy. And I was right. I only ever needed Lapras here. Okay, let's get to the real matchup of the Water Fort. Brooke thinks she's getting an advantage by saying all water Pokemon cost one less to retreat. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. So I only start with Articuno, and you know what? It doesn't go well. Getting Articuno does not necessarily mean a win. She also used a couple Articuno herself, but it was her Seeking who got the best of me. And yeah, her stupid retreat cost rule actually did lead to me getting a loss. I left a no energy Articuno in to stall for time, and she retreated it pretty easily. Attempt number two. It's Lapras on Lapras action, and I don't get any other Pokemon. Attempt number three. I start with Jinx and Articuno, which is a pretty good draw. Jinx can attack immediately, and I can power up Articuno on the side. And unfortunately, there really isn't a whole lot to say. These two were all I needed, and I didn't lose either of them. They took out her own army of Articuno and Lapras. Psyduck coin obtained, and now it's time for the Zelda Dungeon Fort. After the painstaking journey through the fighting labyrinth, as they say, I find Tony who hates energy removal cards, which basically means I switch the three of my deck to more defenders and plus powers. Yeah, no bigs. But this battle, oh man, it took me over nine minutes because I was actually experiencing energy problems. But it ultimately wasn't an issue because I started with Articuno who has a fighting resistance. Dude ended up with three Dark Dug Trio who only deal 10 damage per turn 50% of the time due to its knockdown attack. Finally, I got enough energies to attack and then it was easy. Mitch gets freed and tries to tell me that this stupid Porygon card he found is cool and it's obviously not. But ugh, it was only inevitable to get to the fighting energy only trainer here and here we go. Time to load up on the creepy Jinx cards. And I don't know, I feel like these four Jinx matches aren't too exciting, but they have to happen. They end up being mostly trainer cards being thrown around, but the alternative is having four Jinx and 56 energies. I can't imagine a more dull card match. But I did end up taking this one on the first try. She used a couple Spiro, a Dark Firo, Onyx, and Machop, and I put the Kibosh and Dark Machoke and Machamp being a thing just in time. Let's reset the deck and move on to the leader. Brutus declares that all fighting resistances get ignored. That only hinders my Articuno, so that's not a huge deal. But this one was kinda cool, kinda uneventful. I start with just Shelter, but I succeed on a Pokeball. I could opt for Articuno here, but I decide it's time that Cloyster gets to do something, as it's kind of the black sheep of the team. So Cloyster comes in, but I also succeed on a second and third Pokeball, which was weird, and get Articuno and Jinx just in case. Brutus gets two Dark Marowak, who have the move Multiple Bone Hit, which does 20 to me, and then a random amount of 0, 10, or 20 to one of my bench Pokemon, also at random, and then they get switched in. Cloyster honestly doesn't last too long, so Articuno not having a fighting resistance did come into play here. But ultimately, Brutus never got anything beyond these two Dark Marowak, a Mankey and a Scyther who never even attacked. Machamp coin obtained, and since the fighting fort is complete, I can take care of some unfinished business. What this means is that Pidgeot packs are all over the place back at the homeland, so I think it's high time we go get those last couple Icy Boys. After beating up on some pathetic lad named Daniel, I acquired the last two cards in no time at all. So my card options are complete until I defeat Jack at the end. Both Dugong, the one Cloyster, both Lapras, two Articuno, and all three Jinx. Awesome. Fossil Lapras is probably better than Vending, but I kinda like this Vending one. 30 damage from Surf for only two energies is pretty sweet. It takes three energies to deal 30 with Fossil Lapras, but it can also confuse. It's a close one, but Venning it is for now. Let's move on. The Psychic Stronghold is the interesting one where you get to choose three out of the four members to fight, all with different rules. Kevin over there says that all resistances go from minus 30 to minus 10. And again, only my Articuno is affected by this, and that's if he has any fighting. But a lot of colorless Pokemon do have a Psychic Resistance, so that actually helps me if he uses any and I have Jinx out. This one's a yes. Victoria says that we can only use Psychic Energies, and this is one where I can actually use something other than just Pound. Jinx can unleash her true power. This is also a yes. Clyde over here wants me to use a combination of 6 Ghastly or Haunter. Bro, did you even watch my Ghost Only Challenge? I'm basically the Ghost Whisperer. And finally, Heidi says no trainer cards can be used. I've never fought her, and I don't intend to start now. That would be me using 7 Pokemon and 53 energies. Stupid boring. Thank you, next. Kevin's resistance rule was pointless, as I only needed Jinx to single-handedly knock out his Hitmonchan and Drowsy. Done. 
Victoria's only psychic energy demand means that I can utilize some different Jinx cards. I only have one base version, so it'll be three and one. And this was just the dumbest battle ever. She starts with one Abra with 30 HP and a weakness to Psychic, so I just need to hit it twice and I win, if she doesn't draw another Pokemon. So what does she do? Uses a Pokemon Trader to bring in a Kangaskhan, who of course has a Psychic Resistance. So what went from me winning in two turns became a nine and a half minute match, because I need two heads in a row with Double Slap to just do 10 damage. I hate this. Kangaskhan just Comet Punched my Icy Ladies into submission. So dumb. Attempt number two. This one almost similarly, except I started with base Jinx and was making quick work of her Psyduck and Abra. Just when I needed one prize left, she slaps out, of course, a Kangaskhan. Here's the thing with this. B-deck Jinx is the only one who can hit Kangaskhan, and only if I get two heads with double slap to deal just 10 damage. Base Jinx has Meditate, which does 20 and then 10 more for each damage counter on the opponent. So for me to deal any damage to Kangaskhan, I basically need to get two damage counters on it to have Meditate start to take effect. But my god, I could not get this to happen. Turn after turn, and I only managed to get one damage counter on it. That is, until I drew a Professor Oak, which gave me a Bill, which gave me a Gusty so I could finally blow that kangaroo monstrosity out of there to do a pound with the might of Frosty onto her dying dark Alakazam. That was stupid, let's move on. Clyde has the 6 Ghastly and Haunter rule, and that just means, you know, 6 useless cards. And this didn't matter at all, because I only used Lapras the whole time, who took out two of his Haunter, a Drowsy, and a Kangaskhan like a boss. Psychic Leader Claire remains. Her rule is that any basic energy that gets discarded goes into your hand instead, and I got absolutely demolished this first time. I start with only Seal, who can't attack, but I draw Jinx, who basically can't hit Kangaskhan, here we go again with this garbage. I use a Gusty to bring Ghastly in to start knocking it out, and she immediately evolves it into Dark Haunter, who takes everybody out. I even got a successful Pokeball to get Articuno, but I accidentally added an energy to Seal instead. Dumb. Let's just go to attempt number two. I start with my only basic Pokemon being Shelter, but I also have Cloyster, so at least I can attack by turn two. She opens with Slowpoke, which isn't bad at all. I also get a heads with Pokeball, so I go for the Freezy Bird, but Claire starts to go crazy, slapping Oakman down like they're credit cards. But I get her stupid strategy. Any energy that gets discarded from Professor Oak also goes into her hand, so she will have no shortage of energies. But you know what, Claire? Doing that too much along with Bills and Fetch with Kangaskhan is going to make you run out of cards quick. And that's exactly what happened. She basically lost it for herself. There were only a few turns that I intentionally didn't knock out Kangaskhan so she would keep doing it, but she started to power it up, so I took it out with a Cloyster. But yeah, aside from that, it was more her losing it rather than me winning. Anyway, Mew coin obtained, and now we're at the end of the game, finally. Lame Rod gets released from his kidnapping and says something like, I sincerely hope that this card will help you on your journey. And well, I sincerely hope that I don't accidentally put this Dragonite card up for my archery target practice. This is an ice challenge, Rod. What am I supposed to do with this? So now only the colorless altar and the castle remains, along with taking all of the Grandmasters to school once more. We're almost there, but there's still many more to go. Seth at the colorless altar says I must add four Spiro, and we all know the drill here. This actually was a pretty fun match, but I really just needed Articuno. No real surprise there. He used some real beefy boys like Kangaskhan, Chansey, and Snorlax, so Blizzard was super helpful. Next up is Alan. Tell Alan that the Mets suck. Who wants four mysterious fossils. And you know what? I know this is only my third challenge with this game, but this is the first time where I didn't have to fly all the way back to the other island to get four of these. I actually already had four. So I just exchanged the four Spiro for these, and yeah, also an easy match thanks to, of course, Articuno. But you know what? It wasn't a certainty here. I could not get a heads flip with Blizzard, so I ended up knocking out my own Jinx, two Mysterious Fossils, and almost my Lapras just from using Articuno. Using it is somewhat of a gamble. But in the end, his not-so-scary team of Dratini and Clefairy went down. Avery is the colorless leader, and he wants me to use four dark cards. Since none of the ice types have dark versions, this basically just means four useless cards, so I went with Dark War Turtle. Kinda disappointing rule set for the final boss. And yeah, this was easy. I just needed Lapras to take out six of his. There was a brief moment where his Tauros brought in Jinx, but that was short-lived. Not a whole lot to say here. The colorless altar was super quick and easy, and now we're at the real end of this long game. Let's finish this. 
And of course, Ronald has to interrupt, prolonging this endgame even more. After that torture, I am then tasked with going all the way back to beat the Grandmasters to get the legendary cards. And you know what? One of these will finally come in handy for the first time ever. Yeah, I can articuno get my last icy friend with the legendary Articuno. Fossil Articuno has been very loyal, but it's time to switch it up once I win it. So blah blah, time for Courtney, a typical nemesis, but I am not scared of her this time. And sure enough, my icy buddies were too much for her lame fire types, so that was easy. Thunder Steve, however, this one kind of scares me, and I get smoked right away. Electabuzz took out Lapras and Shelter no problem, attempt number two. I start with just Articuno and one energy, but a couple bills. Steve opens with Electabuzz, so predictable, but that does suck because it can chip away at Articuno before I can do anything. Luckily, the bills give me energies in a gusty, and Thunder Steve over there puts a Zapdos down. Perfect. I use a Master Ball to get Seal, so at least I have some backup. But I take a chance here. I could use the gusty to bring Zapdos in now, but I'll leave Electabuzz in one more turn in hopes that he wastes an energy on that and not on Zapdos. But Electabuzz can do 40 in a turn, so it's a risk. And it does. Down to 20 before I can even attack. I use a potion and pick up a fierce windstorm to bring the nothing Zapdos in. It's Articuno versus Zapdos, baby. But I don't necessarily want to knock it out yet because Electabuzz would just come in and wreck me, so time for Zapdos to stay in for a while. But of course he immediately uses a switch to bring the buzz back. Ugh, if he gets a heads here, I'm basically done for. Oof, Tails, so close. I go for the Super Potion and Plus Power to finally put Electabuzz into the ground. In comes Voltorb, who can hit for 20. I knock out Zapdos, then he plays the Mighty Zapdos, who does 30 to a Pokemon at random when played. And Articuno is the one who gets hit. But, I did play a Defender to not get knocked out by Voltorb. That was close. But that was his last effort, and I just took the rest of his fools out. Two down, two to go. Now it's time for some ice on ice action. Only one master of the freeze can spread sub-zero temperatures across the land. It's Paraspector versus Jack, and oh, I only needed Jinx to win the whole thing. That's kind of a lie, as I brought in Lapras at the very end, but I think Jinx could have beat everybody pretty easily. Well, that was anticlimactic. Moving on to the last Grandmaster, Rod Serling himself. Rod unleashes absolute hellfire on my team here. Yet yeah, four Dratini, a Charmander weak to water, and a Kangaskhan who never stood a chance. Well, that was stupid easy. I do think it's funny that Jinx using Ice Punch does no damage to Dratini. The Dragon type literally only had two weaknesses back then, one being Ice, so that's hilarious. So I get these lame legendary cards, all except for Articuno, who now must replace my fossil friend that has gotten me out of so many jams. I won't forget you, little buddy. Let's go face the final three trainers and end this for good. First up is Clay, who demands that all four legendary cards must be in the deck. And this was hilarious. I beat him without taking any damage by only using Cloyster, arguably my worst Pokemon, and it took out his entire team easily. That's amazing. All that work getting these stupid cards and all I needed was Cloyster. Well, moving on. And you know what? I think it's time we mix it up a little here. Let's use the other card options for once. Vending Dugong, Fossil Lapras, and Legendary Articuno are all going in. Allison uses one of three different rules at random. Pokemon cost one extra to retreat, there are no discard piles, or resistances go from minus 30 to minus 10. She chose the no discard pile, and oh my god, this was the dumbest match. She pretty much opened with four Psyduck against my Legendary Articuno. This Articuno has Ice Breath, which does 40 to one of her Pokemon at random. Meanwhile, I have to sit through three coin flips from Fury Swipes every turn from all of these Psyduck, and she ended up removing seven energies off of Articuno with super and regular energy removals. Eventually, Articuno went away, and all I had left was Shelter, who can attack, so I ended up drawing way too many cards and straight up decked myself at the end. I couldn't knock out the remainders in time. Attempt number two. This one starts out eerily similar with my Articuno against her Psyduck army, except this time she only uses one energy removal. So Articuno single-handedly defeated her Psyduck and Squirtle. She never got any other Pokemon. But okay everyone, we've finally, finally reached the final end boss of the game, King Valichi. This dude thinks that a best of three is the way to go, so the first one to reach two wins will complete the game. I am going to stick with the exact same team. Let's end this exhausting game once and for all. 
Round one begins with my Articuno against his Dratini. I just used Ice Breath twice to beat his two Dratini. That was literally the entire match. I'm really trying here to emphasize the interesting fights, but this was just ridiculous. Let's see if I can pull off round two. He actually uses a different deck each time, so that's kind of cool. I open with Lapras, he opens with Lapras. But this really goes my way, as I confused it and took it down by only taking 10 damage. In comes Clefairy, who can put me to sleep every turn with shining fingers. So we go back and forth a bit here as he starts to power up a second Lapras. I knock out Clefairy, in comes new Lapras, who confuses me right away. Luckily in this time, I get Jinx and Cloyster on the ready, so I have some backup at least. But his Lapras gets the best of mine, and I opt for Cloyster. He uses a Super Potion on Lapras, but it seems like he's having trouble finding energies. Cloyster takes advantage of this, flinging spikes in his general direction on repeat. Lapras, dead. Scyther does absolutely nothing. I get it down to 10, and just in case, I use a Gusty to bring one of his Squirtle in. Boom! Two for two on Spike Cannon. Squirtle comes in, he plays another Squirtle, and it's looking a bit redundant. Boom! Two for two again! Dang, Cloyster! Only one prize left, and he goes for Squirtle, instantly making it a Dark War Turtle. And would you believe Cloyster goes two for two again? One-shotting Dark War Turtle, winning me the match and the challenge. Wow. I never would have thought Cloyster would be my White Knight for this final round. I couldn't be more of a proud papa right now. But there we have it. King Valici gives me a Togepi coin and some promo Mewtwo thing and... Okay, the challenge is over, bro. You lost. But I did it. I completed Pokemon TCG2 using only the five OG ice types. What started out horrendously awful really turned into a fun challenge. I mean, my god, the first club leader took 17 attempts. But once I was able to add an Articuno, it really picked up. After that, there were only two trainers that took me three attempts to beat. Weirdly enough, both in the water fort. But yeah, clearly Fossil Articuno is a great card, and for sure ended up winning more matches for me than anybody. But there were certainly times where it did not work out. I ended up taking a lot of self-damage from Blizzard, and encountered multiple occasions where I couldn't attack with it. So it's not perfect by any means. Beyond that, Jinx was an absolute essential for this, most notably B-Deck Jinx, who took out every trainer that required energies that weren't water or psychic. I thought the other two Jinx did their share as well, though. Vending Lapras surprised me, as I don't think Sing literally ever worked, like not even once, but Surf doing 30 damage for only two energies worked out quite well. I feel like I used Dugong the least out of everyone, though. It was a powerhouse at the beginning, but didn't seem to factor in much beyond that. But the real star of the endgame was Cloyster. What a beast. I went in thinking Cloyster was the weak point of the deck, but man, potentially doing 60 damage with Spike Cannon for only 2 energies is huge. Of course I had my share of zeros, but I ended up really liking Cloyster. I didn't even bother using Clamp because it cost the same, but I'd rather try for 60 damage rather than 30 with Paralysis. So, yeah, I am glad I did this. I had a lot of fun last year with the first game with these Pokemon, so now I can say I did the challenge with both games. This one had many more options, but was more frustrating at the beginning, and it just takes so much longer to beat. My thoughts on this game have not changed. It's a great game that I do think is better than the first due to the amount of cards that are here, combined with the length and gimmicky deck requirements. But the story is just so stupid, and this is the lesser game when it comes to challenges. Those deck requirements really put a damper on things, having to change your deck almost every single time just to include cards that don't match my self-made rules. It gets annoying, but I think next time I play this, it will be for a challenge idea that can cater to this more appropriately. Like, maybe each deck requirement will be the main focus each time or something. I have to use four Pikachu, then I will build a deck around using only those four Pikachu. I don't know, we'll see. What I do know is that I need a break from this game, and maybe these challenges in general. They won't be going away, but I want to spread them apart a little more to make them more special. So thank you for joining me on this holiday romp, and I think it's time we go surprise Spike with his gift. Well, Spike, your gift is ready. I didn't wrap it, though. Yeah, fine. Look, Nick is still staring into our window. Are you sure you want to open that box? This is freaking me out. Yeah, why not? It's a deck of Pokemon cards. Wait a minute. Geodude? Onyx? Cubone? Spike, do you know what this is? This is Matthew's deck. But why? He's gone. There's a... There's a note here. 
It says, better watch out. Huh. Well, you want to play a card game?